Next question is from Marvin, which is a Christmas themed question. So this is a really great question to have this uh, month. And he asks, every Christmas we hear the message of the birth of our Jesus, our Savior. The Gospels teach us that sometime after his birth, a star appeared in the east. The Magi, who were located to the east of Jesus and his parent, looked at that star in the east and proceeded to head west, not east. I wonder how seeing a star in the east caused the Magi to head in the opposite direction. I've watched multiple preachers and teachers for decades, both online and in person, and I never heard this addressed. The only one that gave this theory in a book I read a long time ago was Emmanuel Velikovsky, who proposed it was the planet Venus with a tail. That doesn't make any sense because the star led them, which means the star would be in the west. I have theories of my own, but I would love to hear yours. Thank you. It's a really great question. This is a great question because it comes up often, and um, you know, just for fun, you know, I love astronomy. I'm actually an amateur astronomer building an observatory in my backyard. That's awesome. And so um, I've been watching this for, you know, or looking at the arguments for, you know, 30 years in that regard. And so this is kind of fun. And um, when we think about the star of Bethlehem, there was a movie that came out in 2007 or so, which was trying to bring together some of the astronomy and in some ways maybe even the astrology. Um, Astrology is bad, astronomy is good in that sense, but trying to look at some of the potential natural explanations for what has gone on. Uh, before I address that, let's talk about the background. Um, the star of, of Bethlehem, and especially as it comes in the, in the book of Matthew chapter 2, it's important because we see in, in the book of Numbers chapter 24, I'll read it, uh, Numbers 24, 17, this is a a prophecy by Balaam. I mean, we know Balaam in, in the story in, in the book of Numbers. Um, he cur was asked to curse Israel by the king uh, of Moab, and God wouldn't let him. And he ended up getting judged later by, uh, by God for his rebellion. But he says this. It's interesting. Here you have a prophecy of the Messiah uh, by this d rebellious prophet. He says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab and break down all the sons of Sheth. And so this prophecy, Numbers 24, 17, was well known in history, as well as in Jewish circles, as being a messianic prophecy. Um, interestingly, uh, or a messianic title, um, Rabbi Akiva, uh, first century, or uh, second century, um, he actually called, um, who we know, Simon, Simon Bar Kokhba. That means son of the star. He, that was the title that Rabbi Akiva gave him because Rabbi Akiva believed that he was a, the Messiah. So now we're, we're, we're like in 132 AD. This is when the, uh, the Bar Kokhba revolt began. The Jews that were left fought against Rome. And this particular rabbi declared him to be the Messiah and called him son of the star, based on Numbers 24. And of course, he was um, led a revolt against Rome. And you see in the Cave of Letters, which is a place um, in the, really the Judean desert down by the Dead Sea, uh, they've discovered some of his letters uh, there in uh, just south of En Gedi, which is kind of cool from in the sense of the Dead Sea Scrolls. And uh, he lost the war, 135, captured, slaughtered, of course, wasn't the Messiah. Later, rabbinic theology uh, called him son of lies. And so they didn't agree with uh, Rabbi Akiva, who was a well-known rabbi. But you have this messianic title. And so in Matthew chapter 2, we, we get this imagery, or we get this narrative of Matthew describing these magi, these wise men coming from the east. Interestingly, if you do, if you really chase that down, um, these are most likely from Babylon. And if you chase that down even further, it goes back to most likely the person of Daniel. Daniel was there in Babylon, and he became leader of the, the wise men there. And so uh, a lot of scholars will speculate that Daniel is the one that put into their thinking Numbers 24, 17, and that when the star would come, it would signify this messianic ruler. And so... I want to read something here um, because 
Well, read Matthew chapter 2. If you have your Bibles, you can get it out. But what the question comes is some of the prepositions. Prepositions are important, right? And what I remember reading this years ago um, and going, man, this seems odd because what he says is correct is that if you read it in the, the New King James or the King James Version, some of the older versions, it can create some confusion. Uh, some of the later versions, um, based on increased manuscripts and understanding of the way that words, the Greek words are used, the Koine Greek, they've come to say, oh, now we understand what Matthew was saying, um, and, it, and it reads a little bit differently. It's not quite as, um, it's more understanding in the sense of being overly literal, which I like literal, but um, in the net version, the New English Translation version, this is what they say, and you can just look in their notes. The idea of, of seeing, we saw his star in the east. So you have these people in the east, and they saw his star in the east, which means, so let's go from Babylon, now you're going to India, but then they head west. Well, that seems confusing. It really does. I remember years ago going, this does seem confusing. Why is this? But as you dig, it, dig into the language and, and the Greek language, really, and the history of the Koine Greek, they say this, really, literally what this means is in its rising, referring to the astronomical significance of a star in a particular portion of the sky. The term used for the east in verse 1 of Matthew chapter 2 um, is plural, uh, that is used typically of the rising of the sun, while in verses 2 and 9 the singular is used. The singular is typically used of the rising of a star, and as such, should not normally be translated in the East uh, because of the singular and the article in contrast to verse 1. It's probably not a geographical expression, but rather astronomical, like in verse 9. So let's go through the Matthew chapter 2 because we're going to see something here, and, and then we'll get into some of the rest. It says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. That's a geographical designation. Saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose. Versus in the east. So we saw its star in its rising and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, and then he quotes Matthew chapter 5, verse 2. Verse 7 says, Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star they had seen when it arose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. So the star had appeared, disappeared. They went to talk to Herod. He says, hey, Scripture says in Bethlehem. Then the star reappears. They follow it to Bethlehem, which is, you know, five miles south of Jerusalem. The star went before them, so it's leading them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, so now what it's saying there is that it's going and the star is resting over this house. Opening their treasures, they had offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country. So even in the early church, you have disagreement. Was this a astronomical, natural event of a conjunction of Jupiter, Saturn, Jupiter, and Venus? Was it a comet? Um, that people are attempting to try to um, interpret things astronomically, you know, or naturally. That's why in the movie, The Star of Bethlehem, that's basically what they do. It was a very, done, very well done production, and they were doing the best they could to try to say, this is what, this is what was happening, um, you know, it being in some of the astrological signs uh, was showing, you know, even Regulus, which is a star, and Leo the lion being involved with Jupiter, the king of the planets. So they were trying to bring this astrological uh, background to it. 
And I think, that, again, that's well-meaning, well-intentioned, but it simply just doesn't match astronomy. I mean, I have uh, the guy used Starry Night astronomy software. I have that. And he was going back and saying, well, what did it look like at the time? You know, what was being together? And I'm not saying that there weren't conjunctions of a certain kind. But when you see what the text is saying, that when you see a conjunction, we just had one actually just recently in the, in the past few months of Jupiter and Saturn. It happens, they come together, and then they're each in their own orbits, and then they end up sometimes retrograding on themselves and, and, and spreading out apart. But when that happens, it's way up there. And if anybody, I just encourage anybody, go out and pick a star. Uh, go out and pick a star right now. Maybe you look at Orion or something, uh, which is out now, the constellation, and you pick a star uh, you know, from there. It is absolutely impossible to go out there and to stand, even if it's at the, the, uh, the zenith is what they call it, straight up. It's impossible to know where that star is pointing over a certain place. I mean, I could go and say, oh, I think I'm under it, but I could go 50 miles that way, 50 miles that way, 50 miles that way. I mean, you got you know, hundreds of square miles, and I could go, I think I'm still under it. It's so far away that it would be impossible for, the, for a conjunction or a star above you to point out a specific house. And that's why I think that this is, this is actually miraculous. Um, we take a supernatural view of the Bible here, and it's not just natural, because when you read the text, um, it's guiding them, and it leads them to a specific house. So you're saying it's not an actual star, but an angel or something of sorts? That's a great question. We know, <laughs> we know in the Bible that the word star can be a literal star. Um, it also can refer to angels. We see that in the book of Revelation. Um, all we know is a light appeared. Some scholars, some uh, Messianic Jewish scholars, see it as the Shekinah glory, that the, it, it, this, this light appears. This liter it is a literal light. They see it, and it, it triggers the men in the east, the wise men in the east, to go, oh, I wonder if this is Numbers 24 or whatever. Who knows? We're kind of speculating for sure on that. But nevertheless, they start heading west to Jerusalem. And when they get there, they're directed, hey, it's somewhere in Bethlehem. And they're like, oh, I guess we'll just go search Bethlehem. Bethlehem wasn't very big, maybe 200 people at the time. But the star then guides them, leads them to the direct house. They walk in. Jesus is there. And when we see the slaughter of, of the babies, sadly, um, under two years, most likely this was two years later. So Jesus wasn't a little baby uh, he was a, a child, and, and the Greek word there could be used as a young child instead of an infant. Um, but Origen, uh, you know, second, third century, he, he argued for a natural exp explanation. John Chrysostom, he says this, he argues for a miraculous one, so even there you had the, the, the vision. He says, how then, tell me, did the star point out a spot so confined, just the space of a manger and shed, unless it left that height and came down, and stood over the very head of the young child. And at this, the evangelist was hinting when he said, Lo, the star went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. So he's saying the same thing, that he recognizes that when a star is so high above in the sky, it cannot point out a specific house. So it had to come down, couldn't be a comet, couldn't be a conjunction. And so, again, I argue based on being out in the, seeing astronomy often, that this was a completely miraculous event of God, a light, God sending a light for them to follow. Yeah, it seems like it would make the most sense with mm -hmm. that explanation. Yeah, based on the text. Yeah. So, Very interesting. Yeah.